And I will say that the research priorities in the starting of the 21st century are energy, health, food and water, and sustainability. Energy, however, has a strong implication in all the others since it is clear that if we can achieve a sustainable production of clean, safe, efficient, and highly accessible energy to all the countries, it will have a strong and positive impact on the quality of life of human beings. There is no doubt that if such type of energy is achieved, it will be possible to make water more accessible to places where it is desperately needed, and this will allow to improve agriculture and food production with a corresponding impact on health and sustainability. It appears today that it will be difficult to obtain all the energy uh, required from a single source. And attention is being paid to different sources of renewable energies. And we have here today advances being made on energy storage, the direct use of solar energy to produce electricity and hydrogen as an energy vector, and to use uh, biomass transformations to produce fuels, as well as to produce building blocks for chemicals. The wind can also be a source for clean, safe and renewable energy, and it's today a reality in many countries. While continuous improvement in efficiency are achieved through science and technology, the renewable sources of energy are still not competitive economically with fossil fuels. This is so because fossil fuels allow to have a high concentration of energy by unit volume, are easy to transport and handle, and there is already a well-established technology to produce it and transform. However, all that is not for free, and it is today generally accepted the impact that CO2 emissions can have in climate changes. I remember that during the oil embargo in the 70s, important amount of human and capital resources were put into finding alternatives to oil for producing energy. In that time, solar and biomass transformation centered the attention of researchers. Unfortunately, as soon as the price of oil went down, we forgot all the good intentions, and again, the economy was the only law. Research resources were then located in other subjects, and only few highly motivated scientists resisted in that field. About 15 or 20 years ago, a new movement started pointing out into the impact of burning fossil fuels on climate changes. It was a period of economical development and research on CO2 capture and sustainable sources of energy was supported and important scientific and technological advances have been achieved since then. Unfortunately, when we were in the right track, two new factors have come into the play, the economical crisis and the discovery of huge amount of geographically widely spread shell gas. The economical crisis has made the, econo the economy to dictate again the law, looking for the cheapest source of energy and the renewal of the subsidies to other sources of renewable energies that has disappeared in many countries. Furthermore, all the good intentions of introducing relatively large amounts of biofuels in transportation fuels in the coming years are being revised. While it is true that the use of shell gas instead of coal in power plants will reduce CO2 emissions, this is still a temporary solution. We have to consider that the use of fossil fuels for energy production is not more than a way of buying time for further advancing the knowledge and technology making widely affordable the renewable sources of clean and safe energy. It is certainly no time for losing the momentum. And I was glad to see that the European Union at least, or our countries, Spain and the United Kingdom, are trying to work together to keep that momentum going. We should now decrease our efforts in search and development in the field of renewable uh, energies and energy storage. 
The governments, they have a high responsibility and should not look only to short-term interest that can help to be to get re-elected. But they should consider that the ultimate goal is to achieve a fairer society in which people are not serving the economy, but just the opposite. We should be aware that we have inherited our planet as a loan that we must transmit to further generations in better conditions. Science and technology will be the way to help to do that, provided that the necessary resources are given. It is precisely during the times of crisis when the resources for science and technology have to be maintained, if not increased. This has been done in the latest years by Great Britain, and I wish Spain did that also. I have enjoyed very much the, the, the meeting today and see the possibilities of co cooperation between our countries. Already many teams we are working together in the field of energy as well as in other fields. <laughs> and now, to finish, I would like to thank the Royal Society, the Fundación Areces, the FECIT, the embassies of Spain and Great Britain, and of course, to all the speakers and to all the participants. I think that meetings like this, we have, we have to repeat them because go into the wealth of all of us. Thanks very much and have a safe trip home.